Hey golfers, Drew Mahola here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master fitter, and Jack Ulrich, a ping technician. We are in the ping tour van here at the 3M Open. We've been lucky enough here to get Jack uh, to kind of give us a tour of the tour van here. If you could, Jack, give us a, a tour here and give our customers a look at you know what you guys do every every week. Yeah, absolutely. Again, my name is Jack Ulrich. I'm one of our ping PGA Tour technicians. Uh, Spencer Roth, Luber, and myself, we are responsible for driving this truck and trailer, getting our mobile workshop from event to event on the PGA Tour. So we're in our workshop right now, give you a little behind the scenes look of kind of how our equipment works, how our trailer is set up. You can really think of us as a, a factory on wheels or a mobile workshop. Uh, a lot of things that we use are the exact same as they are in Phoenix, Arizona. The biggest difference is going to be the clubs get built by two people, Spencer and myself. They get built the exact same way as it was in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So we have two of us doing everything start to finish, whereas you might have 20 or 30 people working on one club or a set of clubs back in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So the processes are essentially the same. Uh, we're going to start on this side of the trailer. So this is basically the side of the trailer. We're going to do most of our irons, wedges, and putters. Uh, this first area is one of our gripping stations. Uh, we do a lot of regrips here every once in a while. It's close to the door, so if a player comes in quickly, uh, we have a lot of other things going on. We can do something very fast here if they need just a simple regrip. Most of our putter grips are stored on this side since we do putters on, on this side of the trailer. So the top drawer is going to be mostly our ping putter grips, so everything from our classic PP58, uh, a little bit larger side, the PP58 midsize, the cord, some older models, and then obviously the grips that come with our current Sigma 2 line, all 2.0 as well. Uh, you move down, we have some, some more aftermarket things, so some grip manufacturers, Golf Pride, Super Stroke, that's obviously very popular out here. Um, a couple of other companies as well, they'll keep their own stock stuff on our trailer, as, as well as a lot of other manufacturers that are out here. And we're moving down. Anything that we need to put a golf club together is going to be in these drawers here. So this big bank of drawers, we have most of our iron shafts, so we can separate these by manufacturer. Uh, each shaft manufacturer for steel as well as for graphite is going to have their own rep on tour. They'll come in each week, kind of take an inventory of what we might have missing and, and keep us loaded up as far as what we need. So we have Dynamic Gold, True Temper, a couple of drawers dedicated to what we use for them, whether it be X100, S400, or yeah, the Project X, the LZ, stuff that's been very popular here. Move down, you have Nippon, KBS, and so on and so forth. So shafts are gonna be in that big bank there. Then we're gonna have banks of drawers that have all wedge heads and then all sets of irons. So this bank here, it's gonna be all separated by lofts. So anything from the Glide series, Glide Forge, Glide 2.0 Stell, Glide 2.0 Chrome, uh, and our new wedge that we just brought out, the Glide 3.0 last week in Detroit. So we kind of have a, a bank of drawers separated. Each model is going to be dedicated for each one. Sets of irons, high blade, uh, sets of irons here. We've got all the way down, I210, our new blade style iron, the blueprint. Uh, they're all in bubble wrap here to protect them when we're going down the road, but uh, obviously that one's been very popular um, this year. We just brought it out, kind of a first uh, true forge blade that yeah. he's had. So, Are a lot of players making the switch to to the blueprint, kind of in the season. Yeah, we've had a, quite a few switch. Yeah, um, we have anywhere from maybe four or five sets of play each week. Okay, uh, guys. Our most popular or well known player, you got Tony Finau's in it, Louis who plays it. Okay. Um, some guys have kind of been in and out, but yeah. the blueprint's been a, a yeah. huge success out here. Guys love the look, the feel. Yeah, I know uh, from what I understand is you guys took a lot of feedback from the tour pros that kind of wanted a true, like, really, I mean, that is really small and compact blade. Yeah. Um, Very small, more workable. Yeah. So Louis and Tony were both instrumental in, yeah. in kind of the design. And, feedback they gave uh, is what helped us get the shape mm -hmm. and the look of that particular club. So usually in this side of the trailer, we're going to start building everything right here. So we'll get the shaft that we need, the club head we need, whether it's a wedge or a set of irons. Uh, everything we have, we have an order form. Color coding is a big thing with ping. 
not just for line angle for us. We actually have a green form for irons, kind of a orangish form for metal woods, yellow would be on a special order, and then pink is going to be putters for us. So whatever club's getting built has its own order form. Our reps, Kenton Oates or Christian Pena, they'll fill that out, and then Spencer and I will start building it, usually in this corner if it's an iron or a wedge. So we'll glue it together. Then once we clean up the excess epoxy, we have what we call heat cells. So a lot of the things that you see in our trailer and back at the factory in, in Arizona are proprietary unique to pink. So our building process is, is kind of unique when it comes to other manufacturers. Um, we have a lot of really smart people, smart engineers back in Phoenix. They make the building process for, for us extremely easy. Um, most of our, our clubs actually have what we would call a CTP weight. So for the new Fly 3, that's actually the weight port there. So the last thing that we do with any club that has a, a CTP weight, custom tuning port is what we call it, is going to be swing weight, uh, which might be a little bit different. Live forge, obviously slightly different there. It doesn't have that system, so we have to actually pre-weight and then get the grip weight right, make sure that the line angle's right, the length, factor all those things in, and then we'll do swing weight based mm -hmm. off of that. So you have to calculate that first, whereas anything with a weight, we can do that last. Um, heat cells, to get back to that, designed by the guys at Phoenix. So there's basically, each one of these is gonna wrap around the hosel other club. We can do a set of eight irons at a time. Um, it's basically going to heat up that area of the club and help the epoxy just cure that much faster. So each one of these heat cells corresponds to a timer. We'll hit the button. It'll heat up to 160 degrees. We'll start counting down for four minutes. You can actually take it out of the heat cell and go start hitting balls with it on the range. So it's completely cured, ready wow. to go. It's pretty fast. So we'll build, we'll heat, and then we'll move on to loft and line. This is probably the most unique thing to paint. Um, again, designed in-house, so it, it's built off of a camera-based system. In this moving piece here, there's actually a camera inside of that box. So the club actually sits on this gauge here. The face will set right on the, this gauge. There's a camera inside of there. The shaft will hit this part here and actually hit a trigger so it'll light up. And it's gonna take a picture of the actual club head and all the angles are factored into the computer system here. It'll spit out a loft and light instantaneously uh, without us really having to do much to put it in manually. So as long as we put it in the machine the right way, it's going to tell us the exact loft and light um, and tell us exactly what we need to do if we need to go more upright, flatter, weaker, or stronger with the loft. And then we use our air vise. Hosel club is going to sit right here to make any adjustments. And then we'll, we'll use a, a hammer in a bending bar and that's where we get to the, a lot of players that are on staff with us have never seen that done uh, they might freak out a little bit the first time they see us whacking on their club with a hammer um, it's kind of an art uh, each model club or depending what it is might bend a little bit differently than others but one of the reasons that we do that with a hammer it's actually going to tend to shock that metal into place so it's going to have less of a tendency to want to move once we actually make an adjustment so Hmm. Each time we make an adjustment, we'll take it out of the vise, put it back on the gauge, and then when we're within or get close to where we need to be, we'll move on to the next club. Uh, again, the same thing that we use in Phoenix. We can do about four or five clubs in this, as in the time it might take you to do one or two on a, on a different machine. Um, if we do left-handed clubs, again, the guys in Phoenix are very, very smart. We simply just turn that dial, flip this upside down, and then obviously make sure the left-handed club is selected in our software here. So uh, Bubba Watson comes in, if he needs an adjustment on his irons, just simply turn it upside down, use that bottom trigger for a left-handed glove, uh, we can get right on it. Uh, very simple, very effective, and this machine is kind of the centerpiece for our trailer, so each and every week we take it out of a, its drawer, so it's lined with foam, it travels in this every single week when we pack up, get ready to go. Uh, these are our calibration clubs, so every week when we set it up, calibrate it, make sure that it's reading correctly. Then every morning, this is our, our actual check club, so make sure that it's reading mm -hmm. the way it, it needs to be. So once we do build, heat, loft, and lie, next thing we're actually going to do is cut. And we use three different rulers on our trailer. This one on this side of the island is going to be for irons. 
Uh, this one over here is going to be putters. Then we have a big one that we'll get to in a little bit for metal with, so drivers, fairways, highlights. So we'll mark whatever length that we need to cut that club to, use our cut saw, and then move on to putting the grip on, and then the swing will be the last thing. Uh, one other thing that's unique to Ping is how we actually put our, our grip tape on. So we have a, what we call a grip spindle, again designed by the guys at Phoenix. Just makes it very easy for us to put our grip tape on. We still use spiral tape, which is unique to Ping as well. Uh, I believe we're the only ones out here that I know of that still uses that technique. The reason we do that, we don't want double side tape is going to fold over, sometimes overlap. It can create a false reminder at times. So with double sided tape that is spiral, you don't get that. Uh, the shaft actually goes on this here, and it's very, very easy hmm. to put that grip tape on. You don't have to put the club between your legs. Uh, it just makes it super easy. We know exactly where to start the tape, and then where to end it. There's actually a blade right here where we'll cut the grip tape. We can uh, make sure that it goes over the end of the shaft, so no, no uh, mineral spirits is what we use to put the, basically lubricate that tape when it gets right. down inside the shaft. Wow. So, Grip tape, we'll put the grips on. Uh, this grip station back in this area of the trailer actually can use the most. So whenever we're building a new club, uh, even most of our re-grips we do tend to actually do in this because this bank of drawers is all full of swing grips. So it's all separated by player. We could go through each one of these drawers and we could tell you, Spencer, I could tell you which player uses which grip. Um, obviously. One of our most well-known ones is going to be our, our King 703 Gold, which is actually what Bubba Watson uses, uh, which is our mid-size gold indicates our mid-size grip. So this okay. is how it starts. For him, uh, each each one of these players is going to have their own unique system. Right. So we can add extra wraps of tape. For Bubba, we actually do 15 wraps of tape on his left hand and bottom hand, and then 13 under his right hand, his top hand. Wow. Uh, and that's on his driveway. His <laughs> irons and his woods are actually 11 and 13. And his lob wedge is actually 14 and 16. So there's a, a few different things that we got to know. Are, uh, are um, most tour pros kind of like, you know, like that particular with their grips? Yeah, I'd say, you know, the grip is going to be the only part of the club that you touch. So right. having it, having that confidence once you set the club down, you know, it's, right. you're going to have that confidence that instant yeah. feedback that feels right. You're going to have that confidence to the sure. point of it. So, that's Bubba's big thing is not only does he have all those extra wraps of tape, but he actually puts the grip on open, is what we would call it. So mm -hmm. the reason he does that, it's just going to hit a certain part of his hand. So he knows, hey, if this feels right, I make my swing, mm -hmm. I hit it correctly, the ball should do what I want it to do. Um, and then once the grips are on, you actually see a set of irons that we're working on right now for a player. This is our swing weight scale. Again, this is all digital, all proprietary to ping. So we can get down to the tenth of the swing weight. So if a player wants D2.5 exactly, for example, we can get that spot on. Um, most irons that we build are going to be, again, swing weighted last. So we'll put each iron on the scale. We'll select a certain weight for whatever iron that's going to be. Uh, this bank of drawers actually houses all the weights that we use. Oh, wow. So this one's going to be eye blade. The weights range from three to four grams all the way up to almost 24, 25 grams. So eye blade has its own unique weight. I210 is going to have its own unique weight. Uh, so each model not only is going to have its own weight, but it's designed a certain way to give that club uh, the characteristics that it does and the feel that it might have. So once we're done with swing weight, iron's going to be done. Uh, this side of the trailer is also where we do mostly drivers, fairways, and hybrids. So this big bang of drawers is going to be full of shafts. Uh, again, same thing here. Uh, we got it mostly separated by manufacturers, so we can go down. Each shaft company is going to have their own specific drawer dedicated to them, and then their rep will come in each week, kind of take an inventory of what what we have, what we might not have, and then again to go back to each manufacturer out here. If we don't have a shaft that we need for a player, we can go to a different trailer out here. Uh, the same thing, they might come in to us and see what we have based off of, of what they need as well. So we can get a shaft from somebody else. If we don't have one here, we can just call their rep as well and they'll bring it right over. And these guys pretty much get whatever whatever they yeah. might need. And that's our job is Monday right. through Wednesday. Our job is to get them ready to go come Thursday morning. Um, so shafts all in this drawer. Anything we need to do for driver, fairways, hybrids. Um, you know, we've got 
most of this dedicated to G410, so G410 fairways, hybrids, crossovers, and then a whole drawer dedicated. You can see we, we've used quite a bit. Uh, this is all G410. Okay. G410 wow. Plus, G410 LS Tech as well, mm -hmm. which is, is uh, just came out a few weeks ago as well. So, um, build everything here. This is our ruler that we use for drivers, fairways, hybrids. And then this is our digital off and light gauge actually for metal ones. So whatever setting, there's you know, now eight settings on our new sleeve. So if a player wants a certain loft, if he wants a 90 degree head, but he wants it in a uh, small minus setting at say eight degrees, if it's a 90 degree head, then we'll go through our heads that we have in a drawer, measure the exact loft, we'll keep a record of that. If that happens to turn out to be their game or driver, then we know exactly what they like. Something happens during the week then we know exactly what to build them or a backup to build them for whatever they need as well so uh, build a shaft find a head cut it put a grip on it then swing weight for for metal woods it's the exact same way one thing that might be a little bit different is this is our hot melt gun most companies use that but we use it to get in kind of an internal weighting something that we used to have to do a lot more of with the g400 series now with the g410 we actually have that sliding weight on the back, you put it in the center towards the toe, the fade setting, or that draw setting, depending on what ball flight that player is trying to see. So, if they're trying to fight a fade, then we might put it to the draw. If they're trying to fake, uh, fight the ball turning over, then we'll put it towards that fade setting. Uh, whereas this hot melt, you can actually put it internally inside the club, it comes out at 300 degrees, so it's very, very hot. We, that's how we know where it goes. And then we know that one squeeze of that usually is about four grams, so you get two to three swing weights out of that. So we can position that inside the club based off the desired wow. ball flight for a player. Um, again, we don't have to do as much of that now with the G410, uh, which is a benefit of, of what the consumer can now get at home, is you basically get what we can do in the tour van right in your mm -hmm. hands, simply on driving range. So if you're seeing a, a tendency in your flight, just move that weight around, and, and it should make wow. a big difference. What do you say, average week, how many clubs are you building? For your, your tour staff? Uh, our staff is, is pretty big this year, so week to week we might have around 20, 20 guys. It's kind of okay. a typical week on staff with Ping. Uh, we do take care of quite a few others that are not yeah. on staff with okay. us that might choose to, to play a driver sure, sure. here and there. Um, so week to week, it, it kind of depends on, on uh, a lot of things, but yeah. I'd say typically we actually do a build sheet every week, and, and it can be up to um, you know, 50 items, whether it's, it might just be a shaft, yeah. uh, it could be a wedge, set of irons, kind of just depends on what happens. So, uh, typical week, we open the door and we kind of never know what's going to, what's going to happen in the morning. Um, guys travel, uh, bags get lost, things happen, but that's why we're here. Yeah. So we're, we're here to help them get whatever they need for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, God forbid something happens and their clubs get lost in transit. We can get them a new staff bag, 14 new clubs. That's why we keep everything on file as well, so we can get them ready to go. Uh, and they have that trust in us to, to make sure that the clubs are going to be right and they're going to be done quickly as well. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, you know, how many different combinations of shaft, club head, grip you got here, but I don't know if you can calculate something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a very good question. It's it's a lot. Um, yeah. And obviously a lot of things that, that we have to be educated on. And, oh, yeah. Um, that's why we have a team. Is uh, We have four guys almost every week. And, uh, and we watch each other's back and make sure oh, yeah. that you know we're doing what we need to do to, to take care of these guys out here. So. Yeah. Do you have certain guys that like to tinker a lot uh, that might change it up one week to the next and then change back and and and, and then certain guys that just want to just stick with the same kind of putter or the same kind of wedge or pretty much pretty constant all the way through? Obviously, yeah, you absolutely. Deal with, yep. it, it, it's going to depend on player. Yeah. Um, some guys, part of their routine is to when they show up each week, they might come to the van. And, and check their loft and lines, for example. We yep. do a lot of that. Um, and airlines aren't aren't friendly to their clubs yep. either, right. just like everybody else. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, peace of mind, know that. Yeah. <laughs> peace of mind to know yep. that everything's in line. Um, and usually, you know, nothing's way crazy unless the something happens. Their bag falls off the luggage cart, or then maybe they hit a tree root or a rock mm -hmm. during yep. the previous week. We'll just make sure that their loft and lines are right. Everything's good to go. Um, if, he's, if any small adjustment needs to be made, we can do it right then, and, and they know they can get on with their business the rest of right. the week. Um, and yeah, everybody's looking for 
that edge. So, yep. um, you know, each course might be demanding a little bit different shot off the tee or into the green. So, you guys change up their wedge, wedge grinds and bounces a lot, whether they're going, say, from Florida to maybe towards the Midwest, if they're playing certain turf conditions, or? Yeah, is it I'd say um, we don't do a ton of grinding, but we do some, yep. uh, and some guys, you know, it might change from the West Coast to when the weather starts getting a little warmer and we get more on uh, firmer turf conditions yep. and things like that. Sure. You know, with our Glide Series wedge, there's so many different options. That wedge in itself is very versatile, so right. uh, we do a pretty good job, and guys are, are pretty comfortable for the most part. But um, lob wedge, for sure, if anything that they're going to use a lot around the green, right. whichever club that might be, there we, we'll do some small grinds here and there, but um, we can do a pretty good job with the fitting tools that we have now with the different sole options, mm -hmm. the wide sole, the thin sole, mm -hmm. standard sole, and, and obviously that high sole as well, so right. we can get them pretty much whatever they need mm -hmm. and those, those options that we have within that family. So. Yeah. Um, well, Jack, this has been fantastic. Uh, really appreciate you sharing you know, everything that's in here with us and with our, our viewers as well. Uh, clearly, clearly, it's a pretty you know complex, extensive operation uh, to keep it going every single week, driving the van to each event and everything. But um, you know, we really think it's pretty cool to see the behind the scenes and you know how detailed some of it is. Like, I'm still blown by the blown away by the, the the grip tape on Bubba's clubs like stuff like that is just yeah. um, that's very unique and very cool to, to see so um, Jack once again we appreciate it uh, thanks for taking the time to give us a tour you bet my pleasure